Mount Fuji. Um, I'd like you guys to start marking your attendance in the chat box, please. Can we switch on your cameras? We switch on your cams. Get your books ready, switch your cameras on, all four of you, only the Shamanas is cam on, Anina, Ahmed, Rafi, please switch it on. I'm still waiting. Um, today we'll be starting a new topic uh, from your book, OPE English. It's on page number 184, 185. We'll be doing another piece of poetry. First, let's have a look at the title. What do you understand from the title, boys and girls? A family. A family. Who are we talking about? The child and his parents. The child and its parents. Boys, I want you to participate. I'm not teaching one child only. Yes. And when we talk about the theme of our mm -hmm. unit, belonging, how do you correspond mom, dad, and me, or the topic of the poem, with the theme of the lesson? The parents belong to the child. The parents belong to the child. The child belongs to the parent. Very good. Um, in this world, the first person or this, uh, the first set of people that any person associates himself with are the parents. Isn't it so? And that sense of belonging, that sense of attachment, that um, relationship is the purest and the strongest of all, isn't it? So that is exactly what this poem is going to be about. But this is a wonderful poem in which we will be um, noticing the contrast in the lifestyles of how the poet or the person who is narrating the uh, poem he grew up and how his mom and dad how his parents have grown up over the years um okay um this poem is written by a black american poet who was born in jamaica but he was later settled in england in the 1940s um, James Berry is the poet for our poem today. He was born on 28th of September, 1924, and he died on 20th June, 2017. His poetry is notable for using a mixture of standard English Standard English is the way we normally speak. A mixture of standard English and Jamaican Batios. Batios is the general dialect in which the Jamaicans speak. Um, how many of you are uh, 
cricket fans. Show me a thumbs up. Ahmed, wake up. Okay, Rafi, any interest in cricket? Hisham, any interest in cricket? Have you heard of the of of uh, a country that plays plays cricket? West Indies. Yes. Any, any idea where West Indies is located on the map, on, on the globe? Uh, Make a guess. Yeah. On Earth. Well, that Caribbean I know. Earth. West Indies. Remember, India is with us. We are part of the Indian subcontinent. We are obviously in the East. Where would the West Indies be? In the West. <laughs> Where in the West? Yes. Think. India. Think, think. Where do you think we could have the West Indies? Jaldi se Google karke batayin. West India? No. <laughs> we are in the West of India. But we are not West Indies, we are Pakistan. Right. So where do you think West Indies could be? Look at this man. Does he look anywhere closer Africa? to Pakistan? No. No, 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 no. Not every black skinned person is from Africa. Right. Okay, look look up on Google. Where is Jamaica? Where are the Caribbean islands? Pirates of the Caribbean padhi rahi hai dekhi rahi hai movie no pirates of the caribbean mil gayi yaar tum log karte kya ho internet pe atrum dekhne ke alawa bhi duniya mein bahut kuch hai pirates of the, of the caribbean was a, was a very uh, you know it was a very hit movie uh, and it is also it, it shows you the time span and the history of the Caribbean islands. Abhi tak Google karke mujhe bata dena chahiye tha ke kaha par hai West Indies. Arabian Sea. Not in the Arabian Sea. Arabian. No. Where is the Caribbean? But Which that. continent? No, not in Africa. <laughs> Losers. <laughs> Quickly look it up. Quickly look it up. And send me a screenshot of what you've learned on WhatsApp. Jaldi se bhe rin. North America. North America kis dar? North America ke kis jaga pe? Dunia mein. North America. Surrounded by the North Atlantic Ocean. Achha. The thing is, um, the point where North America comes to an end and then you have South America on the bottom, that is where you have tiny islands, okay? That is where you have West Indies, all the Caribbean islands. There are many other islands in, in that area, in that region, but that is exactly where you also have the West Indies. Amongst the West Indies, you have an important um, island by the name of Jamaica. Jamaica is a very um, culturally rich country, and it has given us many um, you know, notable um, poets, actors, uh, sports person. Um, if you are into sports and you've heard the name of Usain Bolt, have you? Yeah. I think he was a runner. Yeah, he was an athlete, he was a runner. He was also from Jamaica. So Jamaica is a very uh, culturally rich country. And it has given the world uh, many a famous, very a notable, popular, um, you know, people when it comes to um, 
not only literature, but sports and um, acting and so on and so forth. So the poet today was also from the same region. Um, now, in his poetry, he tends to explore his relationship or the relationship of the black people, black skinned people with the white skinned people. How the, basically he tends to cover content related to racism. Um, most particularly uh, the relationship of how, how the white people treated the blacks. Um, but again, he has mostly written for children. His poetry is mostly written for children and uh, for which he has received a lot of awards as well. Um, here is his biography. I'll quickly go through it. He was basically the son of a smallholder. Smallholders are small holders, basically they um, let's say, not, not exactly, uh, you know, flourishing businessman, but any little work you get. And his wife, that is, um, James Berry's mother was a seamstress. Seamstress is a lady who um, stitches clothes on order. She will make, make the clothes fit on you and then she's going to stitch the clothes for you, especially, um, the, the, the women, or, or let's say she was a female tailor, in the most easier words. When James Berry was born and grew up, um, James Berry was born and grew up in rural Portland, Jamaica. He began writing stories and poems while still at school. During the Second World War, as a teenager, teenager is a person your age. As a teenager, he went to work for six years from 1942 to 1948 in the United States before returning to Jamaica. Okay, so initially as a teenager, Berry went to America, just like any one of us would go to the United States or to Europe after completing our studies or during our studies to earn a good living, to improve our situation, okay? America had now, in his own words, what was his um, uh, experience? America had run into a shortage of farm laborers and was recruiting workers from Jamaica back in the 1940s, okay? It, I was 18 at the time. My friends and I, all anxious for improvement and change, were snapped up for this poor work. And we felt this to be a tremendous prospect for us. But we soon realized as we had been warned that there was a color problem in the United States, that we were not familiar with the Caribbean. America was not a free place for black people. When I came back from America, pretty soon the same old desperation of being stuck began to affect me. When the wind rush came along, it was good godsend, but I wasn't able to get on the boat. I had to wait for the second ship to make the journey that year the SS or Beta. I'll explain this. Now, the background is that Jamaica was going through um, a political and economical um, dip back in those days. Um, they were just like Pakistan. See, Pakistan was freed in 1947. Jamaica was also going through the same trouble. The, the, the only difference was that they were not occupied by the British, but they were occupied by the Americans, the Polynesians, uh, the French, etc. So when you are oppressed, you do not have a chance to flourish. And so you seek uh, refuge or you try to move away from the situation and look for better opportunities to improve your condition. So the same goes for James Berry. He tried and moved away to America, but unfortunately, there was a lot of racism. Um, this was the time span when um, the blacks were still being taken as slaves and they were not treated nicely. Anybody with a black skin was treated worse than an animal. But animals were treated better when um, compared to 
the black-skinned people. Uh, calling them nigger was very common today. If you call a, a black-skinned person a nigger, um, you might be reported on your social media. But back in those days, it was quite common. It was absolutely fine. Um, so what did he do? He came back. He returned from America. And again, he could feel because he was not free, because he did not have a chance to improve his situation, um, he started feeling depressed. He started feeling frustrated. Now, what happened was he talks about um, when the wind rush came along. Wind rush is the name of a um, of a ship that made its journey from Britain to um, Jamaica to the West Indies. Now this ship Windrush came once a year because obviously back in those days technology was not so advanced. So traveling from the UK all the way to America, it was just one trip. And so you'll have to wait for the next ship to come. So wind, Windrush, the ship came along and most of the people, they boarded the ship, they took the, sh the ticket you, do you remember the scenes from Titanic? You buy the ticket, you board the ship, and you move away. Okay? So, unfortunately, James Berry could not take this first ship called the Wind Rush. So, he patiently waited for the second ship to come that year. Okay? So, they were also, oh, sorry, there were two ships that uh, made the journey. The same year, another ship namely SS Orbita, came to the West Indies, came to Jamaica. James Berry boarded that ship. Yes, I know that my daughter has a class. And he went away to the UK, to the Britain. What did he, what did he say next? Settling in the 1948 in Great Britain, he attended night school. That is, he attended school at night, trained and worked as a telegrapher in London. He trained himself and started working as a telegraph person at the post office. While also writing, he had started writing stuff as well. He has been reported as saying, I knew I was right for London and London was right for me. London had books and accessible libraries. So this quote shows that James Berry had a love for books and that we also learn that books, reading books, interacting with the books is only helpful in flourishing a person because when you are into reading, when you are into writing, this is how much you can achieve. Look at the number of number of uh, awards that he has achieved since 1981 he went to um, the uh, the great britain in 1948 and it is in 1981 that he starts achieving awards after awards this list is all the way till 1991 they um he the last award that he achieved, that oh sorry, that he received was in 2007. So between 1991 and 2007, he has received further uh, awards, which were all, you know, um, something any writer would like to have under their belt as well. Okay. Um, once I share this PowerPoint with you on Google Classroom, I'd like you to go through this particular um, link. What I can do is, can I? Yes, I can share it with you guys there as well. I'd like you guys to go to this uh, after the lesson, do go through this um, site where you will learn a lot about James Berry. Um, 
James Betty says, poems come from your more secret mind. A poem will want to ask deeper questions, higher questions, more puzzling questions, and often too, more satisfying questions than the everyday obvious questions. Isn't it so? Poetry makes you wonder about things that you normally do not think of. When you are poetic, you can be secretive. There have been poets who have said one thing and their underlying meaning, the annotation was different. Okay? So poetry is something that you can express yourself with in the best possible way. Again, we will come to the theme of the poem. I, I will come to the explanation tomorrow, inshallah. Today, I will just go through the themes and everything. Okay? Unconditional, forgiving, and altruistic. I'd like you guys to first look up the meaning of this word, altruistic. Can you quickly look up the meaning of this word in your Google or a dictionary? Quickly, please. Type what you have learned in the chat box. Type the meaning. Selfless concern for the well of for the well-being of others. Okay. Do you think unconditional also means the same? Uh, no. No. Okay. What do you think unconditional means? Not subject to any condition. Can you can you explain what? Um, oh, oh, what unconditional could mean? Do you think parents' love is unconditional? J. How? In the. Uh... Never endless. How come? Your parents are angry with you. Do you think they will still love you? Yes, ma'am. Depends. He will, no matter what. You have killed a person. You have murdered somebody. You have hmm? robbed a bank. Yes. No matter what. You are being sent to jail now. Imagine hmm? the situation. Do you think your parents yes, are still going to love you? If I give them money. <laughs> it's not about the money. Remember, parents' love is not about the money. I'm your bank lieutenant. Everything is not a joke. Everything is not a joke. They cook. Parents' love it is considered unconditional. It is called the purest form of love. Reason being that no matter what, no matter what sin you might commit, no matter what you do, no matter how old you will be, they will still love you. Yes, they will be upset about the wrongs that you do, but no parent would want that their child be hung on, um, be hung or be killed for something that e even if he has done something wrong, Get it? Accept yeah. most most of the time, siblings they fight amongst each other. That my parents mm. loves uh, my my other brother or my other sibling. But a parent's love is similar for all children. Forgiving. The second word is forgiving. Parents have the ability to forgive. They continuously forgive their children for their mistakes. Altruistic, you just came across this word. Equal for all. They do not care for themselves first. They put their children first. Okay. Um, what do mothers do? Oh, there's a piece of cake. My son really likes it. I will not eat it. He's not home. I'll save it for him. Isn't that what mothers do? 
That's exactly what fathers do as well. ठीक है? They put themselves later and they put their children first. They give importance to their children more than they give importance to themselves. This is how a parent's love is for their children. We can't thank our parents enough for what they give us, but we can surely give them something back in little ways. Now, what can we give? A warm hug, a cute gift, words of appreciation, or a little gift to make them smile. And if you are looking for something special and unique, then a short poem expressing your love for them would be a great idea. Okay? Your task today is... Hanji, Hanji, please, please. Thank you, thank you. Grade 9 wale bhi bhi se wali hai apne quotes. Your task for the day is to read through the poem, okay? And silently, before the next lesson begins, I'd like you to read the poem silently and absorb what you are going to learn from it. Tomorrow we will read it together and I'll explain the chunks and then we will come to the writing activity. Okay? Yeah. Okay. okay? I'd like you guys to do the reading bit right now. Okay? Because you still have 10 minutes um, time slot in between your next class. Do not waste your time. Abhi ke abhi, read it. And, oh, Fasi joined us as well. Fasi, please go for attendance. <laughs> nice Fasi, timing. Fasi, what time did you come? Abhi abhi ke later. Ma'am, I'm 9-11 pe aagya. Okay, okay. Ne 9-11 you are now allowed to leave. Amira, I've sent you a message, okay? You're now allowed to leave. Thank you very much. <laughs>